Imagine browsing the web and being able to ask any question you want about anything that you're looking at. Guys, I really haven't found a good video talking about Microsoft Copilot Vision and Edge. And in today's video, I wanted to make a comprehensive review going from simple use cases to something that's a little more complex. I'm trying to assemble a computer, so I bought this mainboard. It's an ROG Strix mainboard that works really well with Intel CPUs. It doesn't work with AMD CPUs. In fact, if you look inside, I already bought the CPU. It's a 14th generation Intel CPU. So what I wanna ask Microsoft Vision and Edge is to try to see if I've actually picked a really good compatible CPU for my main board. Because yes, you can go to PC Part Picker, you can pick out the parts, you can find what's compatible. But imagine I'm just an average Joe who's just doing research and browsing the internet to see what parts to get. What's the first thing you're gonna do? So in the first use case right here, I have a tab open where I've placed my particular main board in my cart. It's an Asus ROG Strix. It's the exact same one that you saw right over there. And then I've added two CPUs. I've added a Ryzen 7 because I can afford this one here. And I've also added a, an Intel i 912-900K. At the top right corner, what I'll do, I'm gonna use my touchscreen to summon it right here. I tap. Hey, Copilot, I have a couple of CPUs in my Amazon cart. Can you please tell me which one's compatible with my Asus ROG Strix mainboard? You've got an Asus ROG Strix Z895 gaming Wi-Fi motherboard in your cart. It supports Intel's 12th and 13th gen processors. So the Intel Core i9-12900K in your cart is a perfect match. The AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3, on the other hand, won't be compatible because it's designed for a different socket, mainly AM5. Let me pause this for a second. What I've noticed right away is that not only it's, it was able to gather information and give me some extra context, it translates everything into normal human language. That's perfect. This actually works really well. What I wanna know is that, What's a good PSU or power supply that I can get for this combination if I were to get an NVIDIA RTX 5060 GPU? Great choice. For your setup with the Intel Core i9-12900K and an NVIDIA RTX 5060, you'll want a powerful PSU. Look for a PSU with at least 750 watts to 850 watts to ensure stable performance and leave room for any future upgrades. Look for one with an 80 plus gold or platinum rating for better efficiency. Notice how quickly it answers. As we continue to talk to Copilot and I can show you extra use cases, I want you to see what I'm really impressed with is that how fast it's able to translate or transcribe my voice into text, send it over and then actually get a response. I think I'm gonna start building a PC based on this and what I want you to do for me guys is to let me know in the comments, should I use a, an RTX 5090 with this one here or a 4090? Okay, so let's move on to the next use case. The next use case is gonna involve looking at a PDF file and you could look at PDF files from what I heard and also Excel files and anything, basically anything you're looking at. Hey Copilot, I wanna go for hiking. This is the map of Griffith Park and what I wanna do is that I wanna find an optimal hiking route that'll take me to the Hollywood sign, and then that'll take me to the Griffith Observatory. Can you please tell me what's a good hiking trail to take? For a great hike, start at the Griffith Observatory, then head towards Mount Hollywood Drive. You can connect to the trail that leads to the Hollywood sign. After admiring the view, loop back around and enjoy the scenery on your way back to the observatory. I appreciate it. Can you please calculate what's the approximate mileage for this particular hike? you're looking at roughly six to seven miles round trip. Could you please tell me what's gonna be uh, the sunset time and what's gonna be a good time to leave so I can make it back before sunset? Sunset in Hollywood will be around 7.30 p.m. Considering the hike's length, I'd recommend starting no later than 2.30 p.m. I'm really impressed by the fact that it's able to extract information from the map really quickly. Okay, so the next use case for us will be to pick a sweater for my Las Vegas vacation. So I'm gonna be going to Las Vegas soon. And I, you know, like to wear short sleeves, sometimes long sleeves, but sometimes at this current moment, Las Vegas gets a little cold. So what I wanna do, I wanna pick a sweater that's gonna basically be breathable. Can you please give me a suggestion which one out of these sweaters I can get? For a sweater that's thin, breathable, and warm, I'd suggest going for the Tech Knit Mock Neck Pullover Sweater it's got a sleek design, should keep you warm during those chilly Vegas nights, and won't be too bulky. Plus, it's on sale now. 
What do you think? Now, this is crazy. First of all, it was super fast. Second of all, it found a pretty good one. You guys can see it's pretty similar to what I'm wearing right now. And it's breathable, but also it found one that's on sale. But you guys also notice how it actually found the sweater. It's actually scrolled down on the page or up on a page so it can show me that and it actually highlighted the title of the sweater. This is really impressive. And I think it's super cool that it's able to do that. Listen, this is not an advertisement for Perry Ellis. If Perry Ellis wants to sponsor this, this is cool, but it's not an ad. So now we are on Google's page where we are going to be picking tickets out. And then I'm just going to ask it some questions. All right, let's take a look. What's up, co-pilot? Okay, so I'm trying to go to London so I can watch Manchester United play their next Europa League game. Can you please tell me if one of these tickets are suitable for that? To catch Manchester United's next Europa League match, you probably want to arrive in London a day or two before the game to get settled. Could you tell me when that game is so I can check the best flight options for you? Listen, I don't have my phone on me right now. Can you look it up for me, please? Manchester United will play Athletic Bilbao on Thursday, May 8th, 2025 at Old Trafford. Based on this, the flights departing on May 5th and May 7th would get you there in time for the match. Can I help you with anything else? I don't want you to help me book the flights, but what are your capabilities for booking the flights? You can book it by just me telling you that? I can not book flights directly for you, but I can definitely help you find the best options, compare prices, and provide recommendations based on your preferences. Once you've decided, I'd guide you through the booking process and answer any questions you might have. Basically, I'm your personal flight assistant, minus the final click to book. Okay, this is really good. Folks, it looks like there's no other use cases except for the last one here. So let's say if you're looking for a cooking recipe, you can obviously find some baking recipes online. Hey, co-pilot, I'm looking at a cookie recipe, but on the picture, there's a cookie. Can you tell me approximately how many calories per this cookie? That cookie on the screen looks delicious. The calorie count for a cookie of that size and type, like a chocolate chip cookie, can vary, but it's generally around 200 to 250 calories per cookie. Of course, it depends on the specific recipe and portion size, but that's a decent ballpark estimate. So are you planning to whip some up? You know, I'm not gonna whip some up, but that was really nice that you actually figured out it was a chocolate chip cookie. I like how it answers the question, but it's also asking you a follow-up question. It seems to me that Microsoft programmed Microsoft Vision and Edge to ask you follow-up questions and to keep you using it for as long as possible. I love how it asks open-ended questions, but also sometimes closed-ended questions, continuing the conversation going. So I think maybe Microsoft really wants for you to continue to use it so that you can probably recommend it to friends. It's understandable. So to increase retention, I can see this tactic of it not only answering a question, but also asking follow-up questions so you can continue using it. So far, guys, I'm really impressed with this implementation. Obviously, Microsoft Copilot is not the only AI that could actually see what you're doing on a screen and answer those questions. But I can see this implementation being extended out into not only just computer stuff, I can't really find anything negative other than there might be some privacy concerns for a small minority of people who might be concerned about what'll happen with information that it's seeing on my screen. Well, listen, you can turn it on and off. There's actually toggle to turn off the vision part so you can just ask it questions without it seeing what you're doing. This is it, folks. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Other than that, I hope this was a useful review. If you watched until now, uh, put like a computer emoji in the comments and let me know what you think about this versus other AIs. Other than that, I thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.